Next guest is a real globe trotter. Jimmy Barnes was born in Glasgow and emigrated to Australia, where he was the lead singer of Cold Chisel, massive on their home turf. When the band broke up in 1983, Jimmy went solo, selling over 8 million albums worldwide. Recently, he's been on his travels again, relocating to France, from where he's launched a new album, Cyclone. On tour for the next two months, he managed to find time to join us right now. Welcome to Take It to the Bridge. How are you? Good to see you. <laughs> I'm like a very confused I'm great, globe <laughs> <laughs> I would say so. Now, what about this relocation to France? France. Well, and why know, France? Uh, uh, the thing was, I was uh, I was touring a couple of years ago. I was touring into Europe quite a bit, and I was leaving Australia so often. I was like, I did seven trips in six months, and I, I have four children, so I didn't see my kids at all. So I said to the family, "Let's you know move." And we tried to find a place to move. They were going to move to London, but you know we wanted somewhere that had summer <laughs> after living in Australia. Nothing Fair wrong with London, of course. Uh, but so France seemed to be central for the whole of uh, the whole of Europe, you know. So we get in anywhere in a couple of hours, and yeah. um, plus it has a great lifestyle, you know, great food and wine and sunshine and all sort of stuff that you all like. sorts of lovely things down there. You know, yeah, it's quite different to you know, I'm thinking about the crowded house people who seem to have even sh entrenched further back into the antipodes. Antipodes instead of staying in Australia, they've gone back to New Zealand and all that kind of thing. Was you well, that was sort decided of, that was, to come back here? Well, I think for them that was important. You know, New Zealand's yeah. such a well, you're a Kiwi. You know, New Zealand's such a great place. I mean, I can't uh, sing, it's crazy. I mean, they'd left uh, uh, New Zealand many years before, you know, with, yeah. with uh, split ends, you know, what Neil right. had. And so it was a big thing for them to go back there. But it was important for them to leave in the first place, you know, so uh, yeah. I guess that's what I had to do, really. It's know? important to leave Australia. And yeah, just, so, you know, you learn to appreciate a place a lot more and, you know, people appreciate you a bit more and so learn some more things, you know. Has Europe and living in France, has that infected and affected your music? Infected, <laughs> not like, um, uh, not really, not as yet. I think... I think the, the biggest influence that I can see about living in Europe at the moment is because I moved to a place where hardly anybody knew who I was. It gave me a good chance to sit and look at myself as a, as a person, as a, you know, as a human being, as a, as a performer. And uh, I think that affected my lyrics more than anything else, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I haven't sort of got very Euro in my music yet, you know, but that probably <laughs> happened, I don't know. <laughs> the Euro beat. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> so, so has this album been, been written while you've been in France? Okay. Yeah, I, I finished touring last summer. We did, uh, we did the tour with Brian Adams through Europe and then uh, I had about six months at home where I, you know, wrote and recorded with, uh, you know, various, you know, friends and members of the band and Diesel, my brother-in-law, who's mm -hmm. another great singer, guitar player. Mm. So we've had a, we had a great time at home. So I actually was at home for six months, which is the longest I've been at home for 23 years or something. You know? mm. So it was it was wonderful. There's no there's no lyrics, French lyrics or anything like that. No, no, my <laughs> French is horrible. You know, like I'm limited to sort of uh, to sort of baby French and Marseillaise slang. You know. So <laughs> Which you don't want to hear any of, okay. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Yeah. So tell us a bit about the album, Jimmy. What is it different from the, your previous albums? Yeah, well, see, since leaving Coaches, I sort of went through a period where I was sort of um, learning more about songwriting because I read a great songwriter in Coaches and I didn't have to do that much, really. I, you know, in Coaches, I used to, you know, sing and drink, not necessarily in that <laughs> order, you know. So uh, uh, it took me a while to get sort of into, into writing tunes and uh, and basically I experimented with a lot of uh, a lot of stuff that influenced me. I did a, an R&B album called Soul Deep, which was really big in Australia. I did a really heavy record called Heat. I did an acoustic mm -hmm. album called Flesh and, and Wood, which I was actually around. This, this neck of the woods promoting last year uh, and this album sort of a, a, a combination of all that and a combination of all that it's sort of you know there's uh, R&B roots but it's all guitar based rock basically and it's uh, you know it's quite intense has it, a lot of harmony mm. has it frustrated you that um, you're perhaps known as you know one of rock's best kept secrets and possibly when you when you've come over from Australia to perform here in London particularly and I've seen you sold out shows at Brixton Academy, but there's a whole lot of antipathy accents going on. I there. know. Well, see, yeah, the um, the, the thing with me is I, I'm starting. To, you know, I've only just started working here really a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So you know, I don't I don't expect it doesn't frustrate me because I didn't expect that much. My whole reputation in Australia was was and, and New Zealand was built up on live performance. So mm. I figured that until I get over here and, and you know literally play to as many people as I can, mm. uh, you know that's you know that's when people will start to you know understand what I do. I don't want to you know I hate this. I don't want to have a hit single because of a film clip. You know. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, and then people buy my record and go away, and that's the end of it. I want to actually, you know, get people to come and see me live if they like it, buy the record, and you know, and it's, this is something I do for you know for life. It's not something I'm here yeah. for to make money, you know. So you're going to be working this album quite extensively. Well, for about 15 you. years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be able to see you live soon. No well, tell worries. Us, tell us about the first single. It's got a video that you. We're going to take a look at it, but you shot yeah. it in Paris. Yeah. Well, I um because I made the album in France, and uh, you know I was living in France. I thought I'd get a. a 
you know, a French vibe of the film clip. So, and I love French films. You know, they, they, you know, it's a, it's a great industry there. But there's a friend of mine who's actually an Italian who's been working in uh, in Paris for a long time. He worked with, you know, uh, also Roman Polanski and all sorts of people. And he's a a great uh, short filmmaker. And he's but he's never been involved in rock video. So I uh, asked him to do a video for me, and he he done a great job. It's uh, it's sort of like a mini feature film. You know, really it's sort of. And I'm I'm probably the bit part actor in it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it was a lot of fun to make. It was, um, it, you know, we shot it in Paris, but we could be anywhere. It doesn't matter, you know. Um, and it's just, I just think he did a great job editing and a great job of, uh, of filming. And, um, you know, it was, uh, for me, the, you know, the, the song was, uh, was, is about change. The mm -hmm. song's about, you know, you know, the one thing in, in, the life, in life that we haven't got control of is, is uh, change. It's always going to happen, and mm -hmm. you might as well ride with it and learn from it, you know. So, lyrically, that's all it's about, really. Yeah, and you enjoy the process of filmmaking, video making as part of the rock industry? Yeah, it's okay. You know, it's like anything. You know, I much prefer to play in front of, you know, a bunch of people in a club. Mm. But, uh, you know, it's it's obviously something that I'm, you know, learning to like and learning to use. And uh, and it's something that uh, hopefully I'll get better at as we go along. Mm. you think I'd get good at it by now. I've made 20 <laughs> bloody records. You know? <laughs> hey, well, good luck with this new one, Cyclone. And, Thank you very much. Uh, look forward to seeing you playing on we'll the We'll see you around in a town soon. near you. <laughs> Absolutely, very soon. See ya. We're going to take a look now at uh, Change of Heart, which is off Jimmy's new album, Cyclone. I'm good.